Hi, this is Carl, and today I have a special guest with me. It's uh, Ted Johnson from the States, and he will show us uh, or teach us a little bit about local contrast announcements that he finds to be very useful. And uh, he will now show us a little bit how that works. Hi, well, Ted. Thanks for, thanks for having me on, Carl. Um, I find that um, Sigma photos from my DP2 is, are a little flat when they come into Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop. And uh, there's a little trick of a way you can bring some pop out without having to use macro contrast, which will tend to darken the shadows and blow out the highlights. So I'll take you through this little process. And So first you go to filters, yeah? Yeah, and we're in Photoshop. And we go ahead and uh, pull down Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and then you move this up a little. I can see now that I lost you, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. We've seen your face now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and what you can see as I adjust this, you get a change. And uh, if we look at it now uh, without, and then with the unsharp mask, it helps enhance the edges and uh, before any other adjustments, uh, gives the photograph a little bit of extra pop. Now, this happens to be a very flat photograph, but that was somewhat on purpose. But um, again, as you can see, as we click back and forth, you get a bit more pop and 3D quality. And it tends to work better with some images than others. But it's a nice little trick to have in the bag. So uh, if you want to, uh, Put a little sizzle into a photograph that otherwise might not be quite so attractive. Yeah, I can say that you pulled the amount down quite a lot to 21 uh, percent. The the amounts that I use are between uh, uh, 10 and 20, uh, 10 and 30, excuse me, uh -huh. um, uh, percent, and the radius typically uh, between 50 and 100. Uh, but uh, for sure, it, it seems to me that. Um, the, the, the viewer should uh, be feel free to um, experiment because it's the best way to learn how to use the technique. Yeah. But I find, as I say, between uh, 10 and 30 percent on the amount and uh, 50 and 100 in the, uh, the pixels. And the threshold, you just leave at zero. I found that uh, uh, when we talked before, I loaded some pictures up to see how it would, how it would uh, work on my shots here. So I, I, I have one picture here that I was about to post actually, but I might just try your way before I do that. Uh, take the unsharp mask here, and I notice that it's it's actually working quite well here. I mean, I want her to come out sort of pop a little bit. Right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, and in this case, I sort of want the background background to be not as you know. I don't want the same effect in the background, so in this case I would go to the history brush, which you have here in the panel, yeah. and then go to uh, the picture here and just press where I want it to be painted in and then paint, and uh, have less effect on the background. Yeah, that's really a great idea. And then I have her popping, but not the background. <laughs> right, right. No, that's good. That's beautiful. Yeah, and I think it works really nice on this picture. And we also have another picture here, this one. And uh, let's try this again. Sharpening, unsharp mask. And we can see here how it works. And the same thing here, I think the coffee itself, it works really well, well. but yeah. I don't really like what it uh, does to the background. It uh, sort of brings an aura to everything. But right... Yeah, that, that, that's really nice though. I love the way you're, you're softening areas that don't need that extra pop. Mm. So I, I think this is a really, really good thing you're showing us. Yeah, it improves the 3D look a lot. It's really exciting. And here we have a third shot. I've been a good boy. I've been preparing here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Have a lot. Uh, what I'm a little bit afraid of, and it doesn't really show on this picture, but normally you can get sort of a uh, white border around everything if you right. do this too much. Correct. 
but it doesn't really show on these pictures. So it's it's not that bad. Uh, well, I think you also have to be judicious in your use. I think if you move the amount up to like fifty or sixty percent, you might begin to see it. But well, yeah, maybe and, not. And what happens if you do this? Yeah, that would bring. Yeah, I think you can play with a threshold as well. A little bit. I, I've seen um, uh, people use it with a threshold of five or six, for, five or six, um, for getting what appears to be haze out of a photograph. Yeah. If you see now, this is before and after, and what it does, it brings a little bit of contrast to the nose and the mouth, and I yeah, think yeah. that's that's not the bad thing. It's uh, it's actually pretty good. And, uh, and it does it without um, overly, uh, you know, messing up the natural contrast of the photo. Yeah. So that you're not you're not killing your your dark areas and, and you know blowing out your highlights. Yeah. And this is also maybe you should add that a little bit similar to what happens in Lightroom when you push the what's it called again? Clarity button. Yeah, clarity the clarity button. slider. That's yeah. true. So you can go into the clarity slider and do that, but this is a way to do it more precisely and you have a little bit more control. Yes. All right, so thank you, Ted. This is a really good lesson, thank and you. I will continue to play with it. Okay, so, have fun. Thank you. See you. See you.